Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Hello, uh, welcome back to the lecture on the solid solution strengthening mechanisms which we have uh, discussed in the last class. We are going to continue that uh, concept now. If you look at uh, the magnitude of size effect interaction energy, that is uh, UED between the edge dislocation and the spherically symmetric distortion is estimated, which is given by this expression. UED is equal to 4 into 1 plus mu times GB r cube into epsilon v sin theta divided by 3 into 1 minus mu r. Where r is the distance between the dislocation core and the solute atom and theta is the angle between the slip direction and the line connecting the dislocation core and the solution solute atom. You see, uh, we are now looking at uh, the uh, semi-quantitative expression for the size effect, right? We, we were uh, talking about distortion and uh, dilation, right? When you talk about uh, su substitutional solid solution, whether it is interstitial uh, or substitutional, the, the size effect, you know, is given by this kind of an uh, expression, which uh, uh, directly, you know, related to parameters like R, capital R, distance between the dislocation core and the solute atom, and theta, the orientation with respect to uh, the slip direction and the line connecting the dislocation core and solute atom. You have to recall, see, you cannot just uh, mm, ignore the concept which we have learnt earlier. If you look at the dislocation dynamics or motion, we looked. We we have seen that you know the the dislocation core has to be you know at an angle with respect to its uh, other object, whether it could be a solute or it, whether it could be another dislocation. Okay, the orientation is important. So the that's why theta it is directly related to theta and uh, and inversely related to the r. The parameter epsilon b is a measure of relative size difference between the solute and solvent atoms. For example, in a binary alloy, it can be estimated as the fractional change in the lattice parameter per unit concentration of the solute atom. This is very important point. So we are into, this is directly related to epsilon b, which is a measure of relative size, size difference. Okay, how it is measured? It is epsilon b is equal to 1 by a times dA by dc. That is a fractional change in the lattice parameter per unit concentration of the solute atom. The modulus interaction energy as uh, ugs, here it is uh, ud, this is a size effect, here it is ug, <coughs> which is given by g into epsilon g prime b square r cube by 6 pi r square and uh, it can be rewritten for the uh, edge dislocation this is for a screw dislocation usg means it is for screw and this is for edge and this is for edge uh, we have seen okay so edge again uh, you know that uh, the only difference is the elastic uh, constant term so edge dislocation 1 by uh, 1 minus nu is a constant term which is going to come throughout the discussion that we have already discussed where ugs and uge are the modulus interaction energy for screw and edge dislocation and epsilon g prime is defined by epsilon g divided by 1 plus half a mod of epsilon g so this is this is how the interaction energies are uh, derived semi quantitatively see all that you have to uh, uh, know about these expression is the parameters what parameters are important how they are related with the energy these are all the concept you have to catch rather than the uh, identifying how these equations are derived that is not important here we have to just get the parameters which is related to the core idea. 
the parameter epsilon g of the equation is analogous to epsilon b that is epsilon g represents a fractional change in the shear modulus per unit solute concentration where a earlier we have seen b is the there it is a size you know it is size difference here it is a shear modulus per unit concentration that is epsilon g is equal to 1 by g times dou g by dou c in contrast to the size effect interaction energy the modulus interaction energy can be either positive or negative depending upon the size uh, sorry depending on the sign of epsilon g not size it is a sign of epsilon g however fleischer has shown that at least for some substitutional solid solution strengtheners this energy and the re resulting shear stress correlate with the parameter epsilon s which is defined as epsilon s is equal to mod of epsilon g prime minus beta epsilon b in this above equations epsilon b is always taken as positive as it is a parameter as the parameter beta for soft atoms epsilon g prime is negative and thus the size and modulus effects reinforce each other you can verify this with that plot which we have shown in the beginning of the uh, solid solution uh, class right where we have shown this uh, this size effect and modulus effect reinforce for the soft for a hard atoms epsilon g prime is positive and the positive situation holds the parameter beta in the equation is an empirical one related to relative importance of screw and edge dislocation during plastic flow and therefore also depends on the relative importance of the size effect solid solution strengthening can also be discussed in terms of concepts introduced earlier what is that concept if l prime is the effective obstacle spacing the increase in the flow stress associated with the solute atoms is tau is equal to f max divided by b by l prime this expression we have seen earlier also we have seen this is a very general and generic expression and whatever uh, we have seen that the uh, semi quantitative expressions uh, shown here can also be uh, you know uh, that's one way of looking at it what people have reported and the other way of looking at it is keep this uh, basic uh, equation and then we can address the uh, above problem in a similar manner that is the idea now another important parameter we are going to discuss uh, that is c so far we have discussed the dislocation motion and uh, in the presence of some obstacle okay how the dislocation overcomes the obstacle and that determines the flow stress so if you recall in the earlier stage we when, when we talked about the flow properties we also talked talked about the temperature dependent component of stress if you recall there is a plot where we showed that temperature dependent constant temp, temperature dependent uh, component while we discussed in the strain rate and temperature effect of flow properties that plot we have seen so we will now see uh, since in the context of all the solute atoms being an obstacle to the dislocation motion how this the stress that f applied or tau applied stress can be aided by the temperature component to have some idea about that we will we will have uh, this slide okay so look at this plot this is a force versus uh, position plot and uh, the f max is shown here this is a hypothetical situation where t is zero kelvin because we are interested in finding out the uh, temperature effect on the force requirement how the temperature is going to air so at zero kelvin the external force to overcome the barrier is f max and this force does work given by the area under the force distance curve so basically this area under the curve is the the total work okay suppose if we raise the temperature and that's what shown here the force uh, position curve is uh, shown for two different temperatures one is uh, 
T1 at T1 and another is at T2. Okay, so the T1, the F max is uh, equal to KT1 and uh, at T2, the F applied is, uh, the work is equal to KT2. So how does this uh, help? At finite temperatures where T1 and T2, where T2 is greater than T1, uh, I think there is a typographical error in this. Uh, this is supposed to be T2 and this is supposed to be T1 because otherwise this won't uh, uh, hold good anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, T2 is greater than T1. Thermal energy aids the applied force, reducing the work required of uh, by approximately Kt times. Okay, see, thus the required external force is less than F max. For example, if you take uh, uh, at F T1, this much of work is getting reduced or the force is reduced. For the T2, this much of uh, work is getting reduced. So that is what it is. Yeah, the, actually there is no problem with this uh, plot because, uh, yeah, so that means T2 takes uh, more uh, I mean, it, it gives more uh, addition aid in terms of you know work done. So it is correct only. So the T2 uh, gives the work equal to KT2, and this is the work given by this uh, region is KT1. So the greater reduction in the applied force. So these amount of energy is getting reduced in this y-axis that's the idea so at finite temperature thermal vibration can produce an energy on the order of kt to help the obstacle overcome the barrier thus the work done by the external stress is reduced by kt and this is reflected in the reduction in the applied stress that is tau applied is equal to f applied by b l prime required to bypassing the obstacle so what happens is the whatever the 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 empirical relation shows in terms of either it could be energy or it could be a, a force or a stress that if higher temperature is they are going to bring down that total stress that is the idea okay so high at high temperature all these obstacles can be overcome by this dislocation much more easily when the temperature is high enough that is uh, Tc, that is Kt is equal to the external work required at 0k. The obstacles presents no further barrier to glide. Thermal energy supplies the energy, sorry, uh, supplies the necessary work for the, for overcoming these barriers. Okay, so that is an idea. If the force distance profile of uh, the curve which is shown is known, the temperature dependence of the flow stress can be determined. For certain defects, tau star can be expressed as tau star by tau naught star to the power half, which is equal to 1 minus T by Tc to the power half. So this is a relation between the temperature dependence and the flow, flow stress. So if we, if we have an idea about the force distance profile of any particular um, situation or a, a system then this kind of uh, relation is established for example where tau naught star is the thermal component of the yield stress at 0k and tc is the above mentioned critical temperature what is above mentioned critical temperature the temperature at at which the kt is equal to the external work that is the critical temperature the relationship between tau star and t predicted by this equation has been verified experimentally for several materials okay so what is that we have uh, shown so what we have shown is the temperature dependent component of uh, tau that is the stress can be significantly reduced uh, if the temperature uh, i mean if, if the obstacle uh, is you know facing the dislocation at higher temperatures so that is how we are saying so we will we will see this term in the high temperature deformation also Right. the temperature dependent component of shear stress. 
Okay, now we move on to the other strengthening mechanism, um, particle hardening. Okay, so we have now seen uh, uh, boundary strengthening, solid solution strengthening, work hardening, and this is particle hardening. This is also sometimes called precipitation hardening, dispersion hardening, and so on. But then we give a very general description like particle hardening. Right? Okay. What are the uh, important points we need to uh, understand before we get into this topic? What we are seeing here is uh, uh, interface boundary. Alpha is one crystalline uh, material uh, or the lattice which uh, is described like this. The beta is other crystalline lattice and then you have this interface boundary. And what is that uh, you are seeing? When you see this kind of boundary, how, how will you describe them? They are all coherent boundaries, right? Three types of interface boundaries we are going to see. And this is the first coherent boundary. A coherent or ordered interface boundary exists between alpha and beta phase. The atoms match up. What is match up? Basically, each, uh, each one atom is directly connected to the, the other external atoms without any defect one to one along such a boundary owing to different lattice parameters of the phases a coherency strain energy is associated with this type of boundary you see this interatomic uh, distance and this is not uh, exactly the same there is a some difference but nevertheless these two phases are incoherent with each other that means these bonds are getting stretched little bit across the interface so that is that stretching that of the bond extra strain which is uh, you know experienced by these bonds will have an energy that is called a coherency strain energy okay and if you look at the the second type of interface boundary it looks like this and what is that we are seeing here it is not the same like what we have seen here. Definitely it is quite different. How do we uh, compare this? A yeah, fully disordered interface boundary. Here there is no coherency strains. A dislocation can penetrate an ordered interface boundary but not a disordered one. So this is where we have to uh, pay our attention. So when you have a coherent interface boundary, the dislocation motion is easy. It can glide through any glide plane without any problem across the I uh, interface interface boundaries. But here, the dislocation cannot simply glide through, so the interface is disordered. What is the third interface boundary? What does it say? An intermediate type of interface boundary, a partially ordered one. Here, the coherency strains are partially relieved by the periodic introduction of dislocation along the boundary. You see, it is exactly similar to the first one, but then you have some extra half plane is introduced here. So that means it is going to destroy this coherency, but partially at locally, and it is also going to relieve that strain that uh, strain energy comes because of the stretching of these bonds that st stretching is getting relieved here so that is why uh, introduction of this kind of partial i mean uh, edge dislocations here if, if you assume that along this interface if you keep on introducing the dislocation like this it is going to reduce that energy First, we will discuss about deforming particles. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, particle hardening and in the first case is deforming particles. The nature of deformable particles varies significantly from one material system to another. Which one is characteristic? In deforming particles, we will first discuss about coherency hardening. What is coherency hardening? 
precipitate coherency hardening is analogous to the size effect in solid solution hardening if in the previous slide we have seen okay an interface boundary with the coherency coherent in uh, coherent interface boundary we have seen suppose if the precipitate is forming uh, uh, a coherency i mean a precipitate is enabling this coherency hardening then that should have a boundary which is seen in the previous slide that that means the interface boundary should be coherent with the matrix the the hardening comes from the idea similar to what is solid solution strengthening that's what we are saying a precipitate orderly, orderly has an atomic volume difference uh, than the matrix from which it forms if the precipitate is coherent this leads to a an internal lattice strain okay there are two things one precipitate evolves from the matrix that is called precipitation and when we introduce a, a particle externally that is we will talk about dispersion probably a little later we will see but here we are talking about a precipitation which comes out of the matrix so look at this schematic which uh, uh, nicely shows that idea it is a schematics of a coherent precipitate shaded atoms these are all coherent precipitate in a matrix here the precipitate has a lattice parameter less than that of the matrix it is coherent but the lattice parameter is small the atomic match across the interface boundary leads to an external st stress field that interacts with the moving dislocation so because of this small size so we 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 know now if the solute atom is small and then what kind of a stress field it will produce okay we have just seen in the solid solution strengthening okay so that similar stress field will interact with the dislocation then we know what happens also okay the associated stress field interacts with the dislocation either attracting or repulsing them either situation of course the result is increase in the yield strength this also we have seen whether it attracts or repels the net result is increase in the flow stress an approximate expression for the increase in the resolved shear stress during early stage precipitation remember we are talking about early stage precipitation because it is deformable particles we are, we are the if you recall we were talking about dislocations with a straight line which is going to just you know cut through them penetrate through them okay such kind of a situation that can happen only in the early stage of precipitation because that time the size will be extremely small of, of course the other parameter also has to follow the trend in the sense the modulus should be less and the hardness should be less and so on but then if it is a, a shearable or deformable particle this is the Um, expression semi quantitative expression which is which says that uh, tau coherent is approximately equal to 7 into mod epsilon coherent to the power 3 by 2 times g into r f by b to the power of where r is the precipitate radius f is the volume fraction and the parameter epsilon is analogous to the size parameter of solid solution strengthening so we know this is epsilon is a size difference right we have seen that so this is an uh, empirical relation for the coherency hardening which is analogous to solid solution strengthening